Today I'm going to show you how to make glitter sugar. It's really simple to do. All you need is some food coloring and sugar. Here are your ingredients, but don't worry, I'll include a link below with more details and nutrition information as always. So let's get started. Really simple process. If you like sanding sugar but you can't find it in the store or you don't want to spend the price, this is how you make it. You're going to need something to put the sugar on. I'm using scrap pieces of wax paper and I have four because I'm going to use four main colors. You can use anything, uh, just the baking tray works. Next get your food coloring. Baggies are really handy. Now you could mix this in a bowl like this if you don't want to use the baggies. But the baggies are really good because you don't get mess on your hands and you can use them afterwards to store your sugar in. Just place your sugar into the baggie. That's two tablespoons or about one ounce or 28 grams roughly. And then you just pick whichever color you want. And you're going to put one to ten drops of food coloring. The more you put in, the darker the color will be, but the longer it will take to dry. Let's start out with the blue and I will show you how to do this. It's very simple. You're probably not even going to watch the entire video because you'll go, oh, it's this easy? Thanks. See you later. But if you stick around, I'll show you how to make custom colors. So basically you just knead it within the bag. The reason why I really like doing it within the bag is because you don't get any food coloring on your hands and you don't stain up your clothes. And this is pretty much all you do. After it's got a uniform color, you set it aside. Let me show you again. I'm going to do the yellow. And you can use gel food coloring if you like. I have tried it and it actually gives out a more vibrant color. But if you've been watching my channel long enough, you know that I like to show ingredients that are affordable for people of all demographics. That way everyone can learn how to bake. You can always go more expensive if you like, but cheap is always best in my opinion. That's the Appalachian way. I'd get flack from my brother for saying that because he's all about name brands. Not me. I'm waste not, want not. Okay, it's not going to be uniform in color until you keep going. And then if you want it more vibrant, you add more food coloring. Here is green and here is red. Now, since you've been here, what if you want a custom color? Like for instance, maybe I want to match the color of my countertop. Is it possible? The answer is absolutely if you know how to mix colors. And what's great about a lot of these food coloring things is they will tell you how to make custom colors. Right here it shows me how to make brown. So I'm going to throw in a brown and see how close I can get it to the shade of my countertop. Well, it's almost there actually and I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to put in a little bit more red and there we go. Brown food coloring. Who would have thought? Now comes back in this tray and we are going to lay it out and just spread it out so it can really dry out. And the reason why we do this is because if not, it can get really sticky and it won't sprinkle out as well as you want it to. If it is a really humid day, this is going to take several hours to dry. I'm just going to warn you right now. You really shouldn't be making this in a humid day because sugar is hydroscopic and it will collect moisture in the air. Don't throw out these baggies. Keep them open, let them dry out, and then just put the sugar back in to store it. Absolutely no waste here. And you can make it as much or as little of this as you want. I use two tablespoons because that's about six servings and it's a generous amount for cookies making like sprinkle cookies. And look how beautiful this is just spread out onto the tray. It is so fun to do. Great for the family. Doesn't take a lot of time. Takes an hour or so to dry but totally worth it. And here is the one for my countertop. What do you think? Does it match? Maybe. Maybe not. And that is it. It is very nice and dry at this point. Doesn't stick to my hands. No food coloring because I used the bag. Absolutely worth using baggies. I tried stirring it in a bowl before and I got food coloring all over me. Make sure it's dry to the touch completely before you put it in the bag. The thing about using those little scraps of paper is you can make them into like a little funnel and pour it into the bag with little to no waste depending on how careful you are. If you're like me, you're probably going to spill stuff. You'll see this happen. And there's nothing I can seem to do about it. I try so hard to be careful in the kitchen, and I always make a mess, but that's part of baking. And you just learn to live with it. That was a bit embarrassing. Let's see if I can do this again. I'm going to be really careful this time. Again, just make it into a little tiny funnel, and it should just pour into the bag without making a huge mess. Oh my goodness, I did it. So exciting. I crack myself up sometimes.
Visit us at jacksonsjob.com for more recipes, and as always, happy baking. I'm going to give a shout out to Jackson today. He's been with us for five years. He can hardly believe it. He's so excited, and he's just looking for many years to come, and I just want to thank him for everything he's done for me.